So a few days ago I posted about the stocks that I've been buying recently going into October 2022 and today we're going to cover the UK stocks and the UK stocks that I've been buying recently going into October 2022. So this just keeps up the transparency so you guys know all the moves that I'm making in the stock market and also thinking about it in October I think I'm going to buy some more white bar pens because this one is definitely starting to die on me. But we'll get stuck into today's video and look at these stocks. Now just before we get stuck onto the video if you want to join the Patreon that's where I actually post in real time where I'm buying and selling so you don't have to wait for the monthly updates that's when i post buying sell alerts in real time as well as that i post two exclusive videos a week so every three months i do the uk portfolio and the us portfolio on the youtube channel but if you want more of a monthly update then that's on the patreon and i did post my uk portfolio the other day on the patreon which was one of the two exclusive videos this week we're getting on to the stocks that i'm buying i think there's four on this list and starting off with this one which is card factory so this is a business that i've been in for around about two years now i'd say probably over two years actually and i bought this one originally as a bit of a turnaround play so they had been struggling as a business for a while and the share price had gone down from three pound to one pound uh, and then the cv situation happened and that really killed it off and pushed it down to around about that 30p 40p range where roughly it's still at now even two years after the whole cv situation it's only up really 10% since that time frame and I bought this as a bit of a turnaround play I bought this as a turnaround play because I thought the business is still solid people are still going to go out and buy greeting cards or gifts or wrapping paper I think they're still going to be pretty solid from that point of view I think they've been really badly managed through this 2017 18 19 period and also I think that a lot of people priced in around this period of time that these guys with their horrible balance sheet were probably on the verge of going bankrupt and I thought okay let's play this as a bit of a turnaround play and since this time frame in these last two years, the business has started to turn around massively. In fact, I'm still really shocked to see this business valued at where it was at these CV levels because not only has it kind of pushed away all the bankruptcy fears, the business is actually moving very much in a healthy direction. And my aim was this to come somewhere between ATP to about £1.20 stock. And right now I do believe two years on from this time frame, it should be an ATP stock. And maybe if it wasn't for the kind of problems that we're having in the world right now and the negative market, it might have held on to that 80p 90p it was in may time 2021 and i believe that's where it should be i think it should be right now in 80p stock and potentially i think in the next five years we are really in the next kind of three years now we would have seen this push towards about £1.20 stock and I still believe that should be happening right now. It trades at six times earnings, very cheap. And um, What's happened now is the profitability has started to come back in the business and because it's actually making good amounts of profit, six times earnings, obviously that's incredibly uh, low down of a P ratio. And the business itself is really going to expand through, obviously it's gonna have a few more stores, expand a few stores, but it's been trying to have partnerships. So it's done partnerships with Aldi, it's done partnerships with Massalan, and it's also looking through partnerships now internationally. So one of the big ones they had was recently with the Reject store and selling stuff in their stores, which I think there's like 300 in New Zealand. It's either New Zealand or Australia. I keep getting them mixed up, which one it's in. Um, but they're also selling through like a partnership through there. And in the next few years, that's really where they're gonna try and maximize a lot of their potential growth. And the great thing with that is obviously when it's partnerships, they don't have to actually pay, you know, retail stores or have people working at that store, them stores. So they actually have a really good margins on them. But even so, in a, a bit of a tough period of time in the UK, I was actually really impressed with their recent earnings that actually came out um, last week, I believe it was, yeah, it was last week. Um, and in that period, you'll actually see that like for like revenue growth was actually up 4% in that period, which was really positive to see. And based on for lockdown restrictions, it was actually up 6% as well, which is amazing. Now you obviously down here, um, it looks absolutely fantastic here. That's obviously because you had the lockdown situation here. That's why there's a big massive jump in the revenue, big massive jump in the profit here. But actually when you look at the like for like sales, they're actually still really strong, which is really good. And what was impressive as well is the the, the net debt was significantly reduced. So you see here, um, it had a net debt of 96 million, which compared to pre-pandemic, which like we said, was a really bad managed uh, business taking on way too much debt was 170 million. So they've massively reduced the debt on the balance sheet as well, as well as having revenue growth coming back up. Now the profit is getting hit a little bit at the moment because there's the higher wages at the moment affecting them as well as a few extra costs. But a lot of that should be sorted with a few price increases, which we should see coming into the back end of uh, this year as well. There's also the launch of Click and Collect, and you'll see here that they're also 
looking for more opportunities internationally. So when we do look at the financials here, you'll be able to see that since that CV time, we've started to really recover back on the revenue. We've moved back into profitability, which is good. This year could be a little bit of a slowdown after the boom in the CV, but then going forward, we should see Card Factory come back with really good growth. Analysts are actually really bullish on the growth. It's probably uh, more growth than what I was actually forecasting. Same on the profit side of it. I mean, if they do 31 million in profit, that's gonna put it at an insane valuation uh, with still pretty good growth. So yeah, that's actually really bullish. And like I said earlier, you know, financial health wise have been really paying down that debt. Look at the debt, you know, they did take too much debt on as you can see here. Um, and we peaked out around that 177 million. But look at this debt that's uh, getting restructured down here, you know, down to a, a 103 million there as you can see and um, which is really good to see and obviously the really positive thing is they've had a management change the management seems to be really pushing it in the right direction and as well as that management in the last 12 months have been loading up the shares big time which is so much of a confidence builder if the management come in and they go yeah we like what's going on here we're, we're massively undervalued let's buy some more shares and when you got the likes of the ceo and he's buying 94,000 shares that's what we like to see. So really happy with the new management team in here and also the, the confidence that they've given to come and buy some shares. So number one is Card Factory. The next one's Barrett Development. So I think that whether whatever house builder you like, um, you know, maybe Taylor Wimpy, there's a lot of opportunity in my opinion in the, in the house builder sector in the UK. Very simply, we are massively short of the demand. We build less houses than what we need every year. and. There might be a few bumps in the road, but the thing is, is when you're in the UK market, you know we are massively short of housing. And there could be a bit of a slowdown in the last, in, in the next kind of few months or maybe the next 12 months. But in the long term, you know most housing uh, stocks or builders will be okay because just of the demand. And then since really January time, 2022, we've started to see a lot more negativity priced in. And um, we saw kind of a slowdown being priced in in the housing market, a little bit of a logistic issues. And since that period of time, we took a 33% dip. And what seems very clear right now is that we're starting to see uh, what's getting priced in now is an even bigger slowdown in the housing market. And we're seeing potentially a higher interest rates on mortgages getting priced in at 6% and that having some slowdown on the, the housing market. Now, obviously the housing market's been hot. Um, you know, just look at the gain in the average house price in the UK in the last, you know, 24 months. It's been absolutely insane. And it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for us to carry on going on like this. So with the housing market, we will have a slowdown. Um, the question is how big that slowdown is going to be. I think personally, we're going to head probably to a slowdown of probably around about 10%. But obviously at the moment, what's kind of getting baked into a lot of these housing housing builder stocks is a you know, 30, 40, up to 50% slowdown starting to get priced in into these house, house builders, which I think is just absolutely crazy because yet yeah, 10%, you know, we could have a 10% drop off, maybe 20%. But imagine if we have a 30% drop in housing, you know, house, housing prices and the, the sales slow down that much where we drop down 30%. People are going to start snapping up them opportunities. You know, 30% drop off. People are going to be looking at it and going, all right, you know what? It might be a 6% interest rate, but house prices drop 30%. Like the, the house, everyone would start coming into that situation. So either way, it's a win win situation because either it's not as bad as what people think and what these house builders are sold off, or house, house, the housing market does slow down and then house prices drop. But then you're going to have a surge of demand, people jumping in to have, you know, house a 30% sell. And you know, the, when we had the 2008 situation, which a lot of this time at the moment is getting compared to, you know, houses, houses dropped, you know, 50% in that time period. But that was in a time period where that was a financial crisis where banks were going, going bust. You know, they're having to get bailed out and they totally messed up the, the lending system. We are nowhere near that time frame. So for me, I see so much negativity price in these house of builder stocks, and I don't think it deserves to be down here. Obviously, they deserve to have some pullback. I would argue maybe 10, 20%, maybe up to 30%. I'd go, okay, maybe a 30% pullback. But the fact that we've had most house builder stocks now lose half the value is just absolutely insane to me. You know, seven times earnings, 10% dividend yield, borrowed developments, which has for me, the best track record of the house builders, um, you know, if you're going to buy a new house, you know, the, you're prone to uh, a lot of uh, errors and maybe not the best build quality. But I think if you are going to 
hopefully have the least amount of errors or the least amount of problems you're probably going to be looking at barrett in my opinion and it's just a stable company with you know decent amounts of revenue and um, obviously we might have a little bit of a slowdown this year same with profit we might have a little bit of a slowdown this year but i think in the long term the house market will still be okay health wise you know financial health it's, it's pretty strong you know hardly any debt on there dividend wise obviously the attractive thing is that yeah sure it's a low valuation but you're also wanting to have um you know collecting that 10 percent dividend yield you know sustainability wise um i think that it should be okay you know it pays 73 percent out at the moment it's got a good cash balance even if there's a reduction of that dividend by 10 20 percent i'm still going to be receiving you know a good seven percent dividend yield on this and then you know when the housing market comes back they'll probably hike it back up again so yeah um i think that there's the risk to reward here with 50 percent wiped off these stocks uh, these valuations with the yields and um, even if the yield isn't sustainable we should see it come back once the housing market recovers so yeah i am I'm, I'm buying buying barrett developments and I, I would definitely say that a lot of the house builder stocks are worth looking at at the moment the next one's hold ball so this trades at eight times earnings incredibly cheap i think this should be trading probably double what it is right now uh, around about that four pound range um it's made so much progress since before these cv times when it was a three pound stock pays incorrectly we talked about this yesterday on the video uh, actually a four percent dividend yield so good valuation and also the dividend yield they come off an earnings that was absolutely amazing revenue growth was up massive group profit was up massive dividend was up massive and they also announced a massive acquisition so they are now going to expand they bought t quinn holdings which is a canadian bowling company and they're now going to be they're taking on their locations which i think they've got six it does say somewhere down here i should have probably checked this i think it's six locations and um, and also they offer the b to b supplier as well so the plan is for them now to a oh, it's five centers the plan is for them now this is how organized they are when i'm making videos and um, they are planning to move into canada so they're going to have the uk business which has been very successful through the put starters the arcades the bars the actual bowling areas and now they're going to move that into canada and i'm really excited to see if they can replicate this into canada which they think is a market they can take because there's not really a hollywood ball in canada they're all kind of like businesses that own like three or four locations not like a hollywood bowl that has you know like 40 locations so their aim is to get like you know 30 40 locations in canada so the next part of the growth story begins for hollywood bowl and just to show you how good they've been executing if we just look at their past performance before that cv time so this is when they had the share price at three pound obviously it's back down at two pound right now and um, you can see they were doing 131 million in revenue they're now doing 161 million in revenue uh, they're doing 21 million in profit and now they're doing 40 million in profit double the profit what they're doing before the cv times and once again we talk about this business being well you know three pound before cv uh, and now it's currently a, a two pound stock and i i think this should be right now i think whole ball should be a four pound stock so this is already talking about a stock that i think it's got 100 percent upside in and that's not factoring the exciting growth of the canada locations in the next few years and obviously because as well as having really good growth good amounts of profit an amazing balance sheet this is why they can go do acquisitions like this you know there's no debt on that balance sheet they paid all the debt off recently which is fantastic and um, they sit on 49 million in cash which is such a healthy balance obviously um and i think this is just getting massively slept on um i could easily have probably hollywood Bowl as my biggest uk holding to be honest with you um just such a good valuation it's going to have the growth it's going to have the dividend so yeah um i will have been buying a lot more hollywood ball recently and i probably will do it again if it carries on having a dip um it's just had a bit of a rally in the last five days as you can see here so um yeah if it was to have a five percent drop off which obviously uh, could happen in one day and um, i'll probably buy again as well and the last one is kate box so kate box is one get once again i think a stock that's getting massively unfairly punished and um, trades at seven times earnings which i just think is insane and um, it pays a six percent dividend yield and yeah same again this stock has just been really since november 2021 when it was nearly a four pound stock down 69 percent and same again i think easily you argue that you know kate box should be probably a two pound three pound stock at the moment so i think this is massively sold off and then you've got the growth that they're going to have in the future which obviously is going to be exciting they do um egg free cakes uh, you might have seen them whether they be cakes that are already made or 
cakes for birthdays, they do a couple of buns as well, and um, they have their own stores, they have some kiosks, they're opening up in some locations like Asda, and their aim in the next five years is to double their store location. Now, if you do look at the store locations, um, they don't really have that many at the moment, so there's massive room for expansion, and there's only one where I am from, um, and that is on the other side of the city, so it's about half an hour drive, and I generally can think of already three or four locations where they could have where I live, so they have you know massive amounts of expansion there. And same again, you look at this business here, and in the last two years, absolutely amazing performance. Revenue went from 18 million to 32 million. We saw the profit go from three million to six million, so they double the profit as well, as well as the revenue. And financial health-wise, solid business again. It's sitting on 8% debt to equity. It sits on a cash balance of six million as well. Its dividend at the moment is pretty sustainable at 48% payout as well. And recently as well, the founder, the CEO, um, he bought a massive stake in the business uh, as it's been dipping, as you can see here. Um, and he is obviously the largest shareholder at 25% as well. And in the recent earnings, um, it did say that they have seen a bit of weakness because of what's going on in the world at the moment. Obviously, you know, budget's getting a bit tighter and everything like that. So they did see that re revenue did slow down slightly. See like for like sales decline 2.8%. So obviously there's a bit of weakness there. It also said that it's seen profit at the moment as well, decline at the moment because of the environment that we're in at the moment. So they are having a bit of a slowdown phase at the moment, which you would expect for something like this. Um, however, it's still holding pretty well onto the gains that it's made in the last two years through profit and revenue going up. And I think that this will be a year where it just has a bit of a cooling phase because obviously uh, the performance has just been absolutely insane. So a bit of a period really through like, 2019 to 2020, it had a bit of a cooling phase after a, a crazy 2017, 2018. Uh, and then I think we'll be back on a bit of a steam train forward with more stores opening and the economy hopefully looking a bit better in the UK. And um, then it goes back on to doing good growth, good growth in profit, good growth in revenue. Uh, obviously a, a lovely dividend there. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see them attempt to uh, double their start, the amount of stars they have in the next five years. And um, I think that once the negativity goes away from the share price, that should easily see it right, you know, go up to probably two, three pound. And then hopefully if they double the star count in the next five years, and um, we should see Kate Box start pushing a bit more into the five pound, six pound range. Um, so yeah, I did buy a bit more Kate Box um, and this actually had a bit of a bad month as well. So it's actually a target that I'm probably gonna look at buying uh, in the next few weeks as well uh, once again so yeah that's the the last stock on this list so hope you enjoyed the little update onto the uk stocks i've been buying let me know in the comment section what stocks you've been buying as well and uh, as always hit that like button if you subscribe and uh, i'll see you in the next video